Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about projectile motion uh, in terms of a college physics one class, basically. Um, and that's generally where you'll first learn this topic, and it's pretty simple, so I'm just going to go over all the little ideas behind it. Now, what a projectile is, is let's say you have some kind of a, a cannon or a gun, and you're shooting something. The only initial, like the only force is going to be on it is the initial force you put in, and then gravity or any kind of constant acceleration. So a projectile, you put initial force on it, then it just goes. You're not, you don't have like thrust on it like a rocket or something. So obviously this could apply to a cannon, uh, anything like a ball you're throwing. Um, I mean, any anything that's just not having some kind of thrust on it. Um, the only force that's acting on after it goes off, let's say if you're throwing it on Earth, is gonna be Earth's gravity pulling downwards. And generally we describe this, I'm gonna go to blue, now, this is just a kinematic equation. It's the most common thing you'll use when talking about projective motion, at least physics one, pretty easy projectile motion, is that you'll have this, which is um, y. You don't have to write it as a function of time, it's kind of assumed, but y as a function of time is going to be the initial height, y naught, plus the initial velocity, which I guess you could all, you know, I'll just call it v, times time, and then you're going to have minus one-half gt squared. Now, in the kinematic equation, it's at squared for x and or y, but when you're on Earth, you just write gt squared because that's going to be the only constant acceleration pulling it down, at least in examples of projectile motion. And so, just to label everything, this is your initial height. Switch to blue, actually no, I want to go green. Then we're gonna have initial velocity. Put the Y there. Switch to black, and then this is just really this whole thing is just to account for gravity. So if you're wondering, well, why is it one half GT squared? It just comes from our kinematic equations, which you should have already should already know if you're taking physics one right now, which you probably are if you're learning about this. If not, just look up the kinematic equations or just Google kinematics. You can probably learn everything about it very quickly. Just read it through once. It'll be enough to understand everything here at least. <coughs> There's obviously more kinematic equations, but this is the one that you'll use the most. So anyways, moving on. Now, you might be saying, well, how is this useful? Well, you put in all this initial information and you can figure out the height of whatever it is you're shooting or throwing at any time. So obviously that can be useful if you're trying to model something and you know the initial velocity and the initial height, that's really all you need to know, and then you can figure out where it is. Um, and since there's no other forces acting in the x direction, whatever speed its horizontal direction is, it just keeps going at that speed until it hits the ground. Obviously we're not taking into account air resistance, so the initial x speed is constant. The initial y speed is only changed by gravity, and so that's why we can model everything with projectile motion. So moving on, let me just adjust my camera quickly here. I'm gonna make a nice big graph here. A nice big crooked graph, specifically. And the x-axis is gonna be time. The y-axis is going to be y, which is just height. So we're modeling height versus time t. Now, let's say we have something that's at right there. It's a cannon, so let's, we have a cannon here and it's held up by some kind of tower. <laughs> and it's going to shoot something at, let's say, 50 meters per second. And this cannon, let's say, is um, 20 meters off the ground. And obviously right here we have zero. So if you can imagine, this is going to shoot something like this. And as soon as it uh, gets shot, all you need to know is this information and that information, and you can figure out its height at any time t. And if you wanted to, you could even figure out <clears throat> at what time it's equal to zero height. So you just set this equal to zero and solve for t. You can figure out the time, and you can put the time back in and do stuff. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> the more useful part about this <clears throat> is that you can think about what happens... Like, let's say you want to know, well, where does it peak? At what time t does it reach the top uh, point in the curve? 
And to do this, you have to use some calculus, not very hard calculus. It's just first semester, first three weeks of calculus stuff. You can learn this by watching two videos on Khan Academy website. So don't worry if you don't know it. Um, but basically, what you do is you get this function and you take the derivative of it. And if you don't know this, the derivative of any position function, or at least a normal position function in physics one, <laughs> is going to be the velocity function. So you have the de derivative of y of t is going to be equal to the velocity of the particle of time t. So the derivative of the position function is a velocity function, the derivative of the velocity function is acceleration function, but we'll stick to velocity function right now. So going back to our graph over here, let's say we want to make an equation for this instance right here. So we're going to have the height as a function of time is equal to the initial height, which is 20 meters, plus the velocity times time, so that's going to be 50 meters per second times time, minus 1 half g t squared, let me just keep everything separated, and if we want to know the velocity function, we just take a derivative of this, so I'm going to say the velocity of t is equal to the derivative of that, and the derivative of a constant, if you don't know, is just zero, so we don't even have to write it. Uh, the derivative of a any number multiplied by the variable is just going to be that number. So the derivative of 50t is just simply 50. Oh, hi me. Um, <laughs> so the derivative of 50t is just 50. And then we have minus 1 half gt squared, so it still keeps the minus. And then you have 1 half and g, those are constants. And then the derivative of t squared is just 2t. So then the 2 and the 1 half cancel out, and you just get minus gt. And that's your velocity function. And you might be wondering, well, how is that useful? Well, you can put in any time and you can figure out the velocity. So now just based off of knowing the height and the velocity, you can figure out the height at any time in this motion. You can figure out where it hits the ground by setting it equal to zero. So you can take the derivative of the function you made, only knowing these two information to get the velocity function. And then what also you can really do is remember our little question here. So you want to know where it peaks off, where it, it hits the top of its curve. You can set the velocity function equal to zero and find that point because when it reaches this point in the y direction, it's going to be equal to zero. Oh, and big thing I forgot to mention. <laughs> this velocity right here is not the velocity it's being shot at. This is the vertical velocity. So 50 meters per second upwards and that that's important. I'll tell you <laughs> I'll tell you why it's important because let's say it was going at 50 meters um well let me see if I have room over here. Over here. So forgetting this stuff for a while, I'll tell you let's say it was launching at 100 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. This is mostly just trig stuff. But let's say you want to figure out the um, vertical velocity. So this 50 meters per second is the vertical velocity, and that's why we can use this vertical function. But if we wanted to find out the vertical velocity based on the whatever angle it's launching at velocity, to figure out the vertical velocity, it's just the sine of the angle, 30 degrees, and then you're going to multiply that times the velocity. And if you want to sign, so that's going to equal the velocity in the y direction. And then if you want to figure out the velocity in the x direction, you're just going to get the cosine of 30 degrees times that speed, and that's going to be the velocity in the x direction. So I forgot to mention that at the beginning, um, which is kind of bad, but I taught you now, so just remember that. This is the vertical velocity, not the velocity it's being shot at. The velocity it's being shot at is probably, well, it's definitely bigger than that, because for, so it's the combination of the vertical and horizontal velocity. So anyways, if you want to find out what the velocity is at the vertical point, what you do is you set the um, velocity function equal to zero. So now we have 50 minus gt is equal to zero. And then you're just going to say, well, just solve for t. So you have 50 is equal to gt, and then t is equal to 50 over g seconds. Now, if you want to know what this is, you just punch it in the calculator. And if you remember, which you should because I said it before, I think, I hope, maybe I didn't, but <laughs> g 
is just the acceleration of Earth's gravitational field. So it's just 9.8 meters per second squared. And so you can just put that in a calculator. It's about five if I round to one sig fig, but I'm doing two, so blah, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I only have, I won't even get into that in this video because it'll probably just confuse you. But that's the time that the velocity is zero in the y direction because think about it right here. Right here, it's still going up, 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 whereas gravity is pulling it down. And then the um, gravity is going to kill all of the vertical velocity. So right here, it's zero meters per second, up or down. It's still going, whatever speed it was shot at horizontally, there's nothing changing that if we ignore air resistance. So after that point, it gets pulled down by gravity, so then it keeps going, projectile motion downwards from gravity, which is acting constantly at any point around the Earth at the same time, as long as you're the same distance from the center of the Earth, which you pretty much are. So you can just say that it's just a constant number. And that's why this works. So that pretty much covers everything you can do in this example. Actually, what I'm going to do before I end this video is, remember I, before I said that the derivative, let's look at this in frame, derivative of the position function, y of t, is equal to the velocity function. Well, it also turns out that the derivative with respect to time of velocity function is going to be equal to the acceleration function. And so, this is kind of going to blow your mind, I hope at least, is that we have this velocity function, 50 minus gt squared. And we're wondering, well, what is the acceleration of this entire system? So, this, I'm kind of running out of space here, but I'll try to squeeze it in. So, the derivative of a 50, I'll just underline it, is zero. So, we have the acceleration with respect to time is equal to zero minus gt squared. And what is a number times t? Uh, what is the derivative of a number times t? Well, it's just that number. So then we're going to have minus g. So the acceleration, the only acceleration that's acting on this thing is just negative g. Negative because it's downward. And so the acceleration is just negative, well, you can't see that, negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason this should blow your mind is, I mean, it isn't really a surprise, it just kind of connects everything in one whole piece, is that, remember I said that you have to have a constant acceleration in this, otherwise these equations stop working, and the only thing that's acting on it is gravity. So, we said at the very beginning that the only acceleration acting on it was gravity, and then if you take the derivative of the position function, you get the velocity function, you take the derivative of the velocity function you made from the position function from these two variables, you find out the acceleration, which is just negative g, which, without calculus, you already knew, but it just kind of brings everything together in one whole really cool nerdgasm way. Um, so yeah, um, I hope this helped any of you guys who may have been taking some kind of course and you're wondering about projectile motion, or maybe it just kind of piqued your interest. Um, so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.